All right, let's get right into it. Are you a teacher that would like to earn extra money after school, but would rather not do it spending more time with kids tutoring? I hear ya. And don't get me wrong, I love kids just as much as the next teacher, but when it comes to your after school hours, you need a break, right? Can I get a thumbs up? Uh, however, you must keep in mind that this is not a get rich quick video by any means. Uh, you definitely have to put in some effort and some work, but if you have an extra two to five hours or more, um, uh, more a week, you could definitely end up with an extra few hundred or even a couple thousand or more per month with some of these ideas. All right, so idea number one is beta reading, okay? And if you're thinking, what the heck is beta reading? That's exactly what I thought just a few months ago when I joined a Facebook group for freelancers and a couple of the freelancers were talking about beta reading and I was like, what the heck is beta reading? So I'll include a few links below so you can go into more depth on this on a couple blog posts that people have posted on beta reading. But generally what beta reading is, it's reading someone's document, script, or book, or any sort of like written article, um, basically reading it before it's being published, but it's not the same as editing. Basically you're reading to give feedback and ideas to the writer on how to make it better, or just like different things they need to fix or adjust or, you know, maybe add or take away. But if you're someone who would rather spend your afternoon after school in the solitude of your own bedroom or in the quiet of your living room, or even in the luxury of a cafe, reading to yourself, um, you might find beta reading could be a good idea for you to earn extra money after school that doesn't involve tutoring. Now you're probably wondering where can you find these beta reading jobs, and a lot of them are posted on freelancing sites like Upwork and Fiverr, and generally I've seen rates anywhere from as low as $5 on Fiverr, of course, but it seemed like the average was $20 to $25. I've even seen all the way up to $150 or more. I would definitely encourage you to go on to Fiverr.com and just look up beta reading and just look at the different gigs that people have uh, to get an idea of what it's like and what you could charge for something like that. But if you really enjoy reading and you're a fast reader, this might be something that you would want to consider doing. Do you enjoy walking after school or on the weekends? Do you find the history of your town or city or places you travel interesting? Then you might be a good candidate for idea number two, which is to become a Hago guide. And if you're thinking, what the heck is a Hago guide, Lindsay? I was thinking the exact same thing just a few months ago. And basically what a Hago guide is, is a person who gives tours anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes or even an hour. And Hago is a startup, a, a virtual tour startup that started in London in March 2020, right when things were locking down. So there were two guys who came up with this idea to have a virtual tour service, basically. So they started doing virtual tours back in March 2020. And even after things opened back up, people were still interested in it. They really liked it. So they just kept on growing and growing and growing. So basically what a Hago guy does, they do a virtual walking tour, like just basically holding their phone on a gimbal, uh, walking somewhere in their city or, or a neighborhood. And they just kind of do a virtual tour while people are asking questions. So people join their tour and they can join in advance and they'll get a notification when the tour's starting. And anyway, there may be anywhere from half a dozen to several hundred people on a tour at, on any given day. And basically there's gonna be answering questions and walking and talking about the, and telling about the city. But the good news is you aren't actually limited to just doing tours. You could be in your living room uh, sharing about your favorite snacks in, from your area. You could be teaching a language. You could even be doing a cooking class. So the sky's the limit when it comes to Hago, Hago, but it was originally the original foundational idea was doing tours. So it's actually free to join Hago as a guide. So thumbs up for that. And basically once you join Hago as a guide, you get a page, almost like a YouTube channel page but it's just like a landing page where you can start posting uh, different guides that you wanna do or tours that you wanna do, uh, or even you know doing a cooking lesson or something like that. And the way that you're gonna earn money is through tips. So when people watch your video and join your tour, um, even if you're just cooking something, uh, if they enjoy it and they like it, they can leave a tip anytime throughout the video for any amount, or I think it might be at least $3 or $5, or it could even be just $1. But in general, you make money through the tips that people 
um, give by doing your tours. So if you do like two or three tours a week, or in general, the more tours you do, the more opportunity for you to earn tips and earn more money. Now, as a guide, you don't actually get to keep all the tips. Hago, I think, does take 40% and gives you 60%. I'm pretty sure, I don't, or it might be 50-50, but I think it's 60-40. But in any case, like I have read that people have gotten anywhere from, you know, on average starting out, you might get five to $10 the first couple times. But as you start to grow a following on Hago, um, I've seen that people have earned even over uh, several hundred dollars in tips. And it just, you know, could be 45 minutes to an hour that they're doing this, uh, this tour or this guide or something like that. So if you really start to get consistent with it, you can actually earn pretty good money with it if you develop a good following and have a lot of viewers and people that join you on your tours. So if you wanna learn more about Hago, I have like a link in the description. They have a YouTube channel, but they also have a website where you're gonna definitely find much more variety of the tours. I would recommend checking out the tours and the guides just to get a feel of what it's like and start watching some of the tours and just hopping on live and seeing what it's like to get a feel for it. And then if you're really interested in becoming a guide, you can apply. I mean, I'm pretty sure they accept everyone. You just kind of, I think you have to make a video or something like that. I'm not sure if it's changed, but it's really not too hard. If you are willing to share information you know or your town and things like that, you could really find a nice side income while walking or just getting fresh air. And I think this would be a lot more enjoyable than sitting inside a cold classroom tutoring. So definitely check out the Hago links below. So by the way, I forgot to mention, my name is Lindsay and this is my YouTube channel and I help everyday people learn how to use YouTube and freelancing to make extra money. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely subscribe for more tips from me, someone who's been doing this for over six years and counting. So idea number three is starting a YouTube channel. Now you might be thinking, whoa, Lindsay, like I don't wanna put my face on a camera and I really don't wanna to talk to people. And that used to be me. If you watch this video over here, I talk about kind of why I started a YouTube channel and how I got started on YouTube. But it took me almost two years to go from the idea of starting a channel to actually doing it. And what I found out in those two years is that YouTube channels aren't just for entertainment. Most people who start channels actually do it as a side business that oftentimes, or not oftentimes, but can eventually become a full-time job. So a lot of people come in with a serious mindset that they're sharing information, skills, knowledge with people, and over time find ways to monetize sharing that information. But you might be thinking, okay, Lindsay, YouTube isn't right for me. But let me just explain kind of how YouTube works and maybe open your mind a little bit to the possibility of having a channel or at least considering it or maybe for someone else in your family who might be interested in this sort of thing. If you have a passion or an interest in any topic and you know like slightly more about it than the average person, then that's something that you could talk about on YouTube. And really the way people make money on YouTube is one of the, it takes a little bit longer now, but you can make money with ads. But other things that people do is they sell eBooks or digital products, like a, an eBook about something they're passionate. It could be a cooking, could be recipes, it could be a, a fitness book or, you know, some life coaching topic, or it could be worksheets if you're a teacher or just teacher information. Really the sky's the limit on things you could sell. If you have an Etsy store, you can kind of promote your products and kind of show how you do it and then say, hey, you can go buy this on my Etsy store. But success on YouTube is not overnight. It's not like TikTok or Instagram where you can kind of like game the system to get more views, uh, more views and subscribers. So YouTube is a long-term game and you kind of have to look, think about it as something from six, six months to a year or more. It definitely takes a little bit more time to get momentum compared to like TikTok or Instagram, something like that. It's gonna take a little bit more time. But you have to think of each video as like planting a seed and in due time, you will get a harvest. So if you're consistent planting seeds over time, they grow and grow and grow into a full harvest and you have like a good um, foundation for your channel and you can really start to take advantage of that and make and find different ways to monetize it. So if you've been thinking about making a YouTube channel or starting a channel, I think this video is a sign that you should be moving in that direction or at least brainstorming the possibilities of doing that. Um, but if you, if you have more questions or want to learn more about YouTube or go deep into YouTube, um, I joined a program called VRA over five years ago and it's basically a program by a, a big YouTuber, Sean Cannell from Think Media. 
and he has a whole program for understanding how YouTube works to make money. And I'm gonna put a link below in the description. And I also do one-on-one -on -one co coaching, consulting, whatever you wanna call it on Upwork. So if you wanna do a one-on-one -on -one with me, I'll put the link below as well, just to help you think through how to get started the right way to be successful on YouTube. All right, idea number four is to become a UGC creator. So you've probably seen this trending if you are on TikTok and places like that. I don't use TikTok, at least at this point, but UGC has become really popular and a lot of people are really starting to learn about it and it has a lot of cool benefits. So basically what UGC means is user generated content. And it's basically when a person just promotes a product on their own and makes a video about it for a bigger brand. It could be uh, something for Target, it could be a skincare brand, it could be a makeup brand. You've probably seen those videos of people like, oh my God, it matches my skin perfectly. Or, you know, things like that. That's user generated content. Those people are getting paid to make those videos. They didn't just send it to the company for free and, or the company, the company could have asked them to make it, but they had to find out that those, that person even existed. So they probably had a portfolio or some way to showcase that, hey, I can make content for your product for a price. Companies are looking for more and more UGC creators because it's totally, it's a lot cheaper for them. And that creator can reach a lot more people than they would probably be able to, to reach on their own. Uh, so basically, you know, UGC people are, they're not like influencers or people with a, you know, Instagram account, modeling clothes and things like that. It could be someone that no one even knows. They just create this, these videos directly for the companies. And a lot of times they reach out directly to the companies. So if you like to make reels or like short Instagram or TikTok content and you're good with that, you know, 10, 15, 30 second videos, even a minute, um, you might consider making videos for companies as a UGC creator. And you know, your friends don't have to know about this. No one really have to know about this necessarily. Um, I think there's options where you don't have to put your face on the video. You could do like an unboxing or something like that. I'm not a total expert in UGC creation, but I've been learning a lot more about it. I'll put some links below in the description to help you learn more about it and at the end of this video. Um, but if you like making videos, uh, this could be a good idea for you if you don't feel like you're ready to go all out with a YouTube channel. Consider making UGC content. All right, so I'm back with number five. And as you can tell, it's a new day, a new shirt. And I did make the effort to clean up a little bit better than I did before the other the other first part of the video. So anyway, let's get into idea number five. All right, so idea number five is to sell a service on Fiverr. And I did mention Fiverr a little bit earlier in this video, um, but just to give you a little bit more information about Fiverr, I think it's been around for at least 10, 15 years, something like that. It's a tech startup that was is based in Tel Aviv, Israel. And I used to think that Fiverr was more for uh, you know, outsourcing like virtual assistants or, you know, looking for a logo design or some graphic design thing specifically. I never really thought about it um, in other ways like selling services. But in the last several years, they've really expanded their offerings of things that people can sell on their website. So these days you have the option to sell like almost anything. And if you come from a teaching background, as like this video is kind of geared towards, you can do things like, you know, copywriting, uh, proofreading, editing, resume writing, blogging. Like uh, blogging is actually still popular for businesses because blogs on their website um, help them rank higher in Google and helps drive more traffic to their um, website. So blogging is still popular for businesses and that's really hot to sell on Fiverr. So if you have any background in writing at all, uh, I would definitely look into that further. There's a good resource you can go to. Um, go to like Alex Fasulo, her YouTube channel. She has lots of information on blog writing for Fiverr and her website as well. I'll put those links uh, down in the description as well. You could also teach lessons of any kind. You could do like cooking lessons, English lessons, uh, life coaching, anything, any sort of uh, service like that, you can also sell on Fiverr. So I definitely recommend just going over to the website, just kind of browsing the topics at the top and just seeing what different services people are selling to get an idea of what might make sense for you to sell on Fiverr. 
So I'm just looking at my notes here, but they also have a whole section on writing and translating. So like I mentioned before, like writing resumes and things like that, proofreading, uh, writing email copy for like email marketing, for example, um, book editing. Uh, there's so many different things you could do for writing. So if you're into writing and are a good writer, and honestly, you don't even have to be that great of a writer, but just kind of have an interest and knowledge on different topics that can be really helpful. You could do advice, e-learning of all sorts. Um, so it's definitely worth it to just go over to the website and just kind of browse and brainstorm and think, okay, what could I offer on Fiverr? Um, I'm gonna leave a link at the end of this video to kind of help you figure out how to set up your Fiverr account. But it's something to keep in mind with Fiverr. A lot of times that people think it's super saturated, but to be honest, like when I browse through it, it's it has like 90% of like slightly mediocre, quality work and there's really like maybe 10 percent of people who do a really good job on fiverr so if you're a hard worker and you can do the work quickly or it doesn't have to necessarily be quickly but the more um projects you can do the more money you can make so don't get too concerned that you might feel that fiverr is saturated another way to stand out on fiverr is to promote your promote your services like on your facebook page or on social media or something like that to get people's attention because Probably people, if they are looking for a service like that, they're probably gonna go to someone they know first before finding someone random on a website like Fiverr. So for everything I talked about in this video, I'm gonna put all the links in the description, so definitely check that out. And in the meantime, if you wanna know specifically how to set up your Fiverr account, check out this video over here. And I have another video about step-by-step -step setting up or understanding how UGC works. And if you have any other comments, leave me a comment below. Um, and I would love to connect with you and help you in any way that, any way that I can. And I hope you found this video is helpful. Definitely subscribe if you're interested in more video content like this. Give this video a thumbs up and check out some of these videos 